Okay. Woo! Look at that. What was that? And mosquitoes are eating us. I'm going to try to catch it now. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> right on, amazing. You got great Get thanks. The sandwich. Hello pilots of the internet and welcome to Power Up. In this video I am teaching you how to fold the wicked Hammerhead, which is a plane from the Power Up Paper Airplane book, which is coming out later this year. Now this was designed specifically to work with the Power Up 4.0 and you will also need the DIY kit, which comes with an extra clip that mounts the rear wing to the shaft of the module, while the canard will be mounted to the front of the module. Now I'm gonna pass it over to Shai to tell you a bit more about the plane, and then he's going to show you the plane in flight. And I have to say, there are some crazy shots from that shoot. It really is some really cool footage. So be sure to check that out, and then it's gonna come back to me, and I will teach you how to fold it. See you soon. All right, so today we're gonna test fly this guy, the canard design, I think we call it the hammerhead, which is uh, designed in collaboration with Kyle Boyer from Foldable Flight. And we are actually off with our Diane, oh! Woo! We're off to our flying field today, testing. This is actually our first day out of the quarantine. So we're taking the opportunity to go outdoors and fly, and it's really a lot of fun to see people taking a bit more time out and getting some fresh air. And we have this nice uh, spot here, there. It's kind of a field for uh, uh, growing grass, for uh, gardening and things like that. And it's a nice open space for flying. There's no wind right now, perfect ideal for flying. Only issue is uh, mosquitoes, so. Now just a reminder, this plane only works with a PowerUp 4.0, so if you don't have one, be sure to check out our Indiegogo page and you can order one there. Also you'll need a DIY bundle which comes with, among other things, a spare clip which you can mount to the uh, shaft of the module and that way you're going to be able to mount your canards in the front and your main wing in the back separately. Now aside from that, all you're going to need is an A4 or US letter sheet of paper and some scissors or a decent ability to tear, which I'm going to actually probably tear the paper myself because I'm even more accurate than with scissors doing it that way. With that said, we're going to begin by folding this top edge to the bottom edge. And we can open that up. And I'll fold this right edge now to the left edge. And we'll open that up again. And now we want to fold this top edge to our horizontal middle crease. Like so, Just sweep across. And now we have the two parts of paper. This is one part and this large portion is the other part. You're either going to want to cut or tear on this line here. I'm going to tear because I can do that more quickly and I think more accurately than if I were using scissors. Do it however you like. And 
once you have your two pieces of paper, go ahead and set aside the large sheet because that's going to become our main wing and we'll work with that later. And now you can see you have this really thin strip and actually we only need half of the thin strip. So I'm going to go ahead and tear that in half. And you'll want to set one of these aside in case you mess up for some reason and we'll work with the other portion. Now, I'm going to go ahead and begin by folding this top edge here to our bottom edge there. Okay, and now with this as our raw edge here that could open up, we're going to fold this edge here to that edge, making a little triangle, and you want the crease to go right through that bottom corner like so, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. And we'll open both of those up, open the paper up, and now we're going to perform inside reverse folds where we just take this little section on the outside and collapse it into the middle like that, and we'll do the same thing here. So basically, your paper should look like this. And now I'm going to go ahead and fold it in half. And I'll open that back up. And what I want to do now is fold this top edge here down like so and I'm basically trying to guess at where the middle point of the height of this is and I want to land my edge right on that point. Crease all the way across. This is just giving a strong leading edge for the canard. And now I'll fold in half again. And now it's time to fold the wing. So I'm just starting a little bit above this corner and it's going to, I want, you can see you can push your wing around and Depending on the angle at which you make your crease, it's going to have a different shape. You want it to sweep back just slightly like this. And you can see what the crease I made looks like. It's just sloping up slightly towards the back. And I'll flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Just folding this side to match the previously folded wing. And now I'm going to fold this up. And the crease I make is going to start right at kind of the limit where this catches at the front edge. And I want it to run parallel to this edge up there. So something like that. And now I'll flip the paper over and do the same thing on the other side. Folding that to match. And I'll get those out of the way because now I want to cut some small elevators here. And you can see we have these layers in the middle. You don't really want to cut those. So start just to the inside of those and make just a small, sorry, not a good part of the scissors to cut with apparently. Start right about there and then make another small cut right about there. And now you'll see actually Normally with elevators you want to bend them up, but these wings are going in the front and will be in front of the center of gravity and the center of lift of the plane. So actually, in order to use them as elevators, we're going to bend these down slightly. And now we can actually go ahead and just slide this in to the front clip of our module and set this aside for now. Next we want to grab our large sheet of paper and we are going to go ahead and start just by folding it in half like so on the existing crease. And we want to, you can see we have this upper section already, we want to basically stand that section up. And we're going to perform a squash fold by pushing on this edge here and flattening it. And we want this crease to land on this edge and you want it to go and flatten all the way to this point over here. And 
and it should look like this. Next I'm going to rotate this and we want to fold this edge here into kind of this, uh, this crease right here in this edge. Make sure your crease goes all the way to that point. And we'll do the same thing on the other side here. Okay, and we can unfold that, unfold that, open our paper up, and you wanna make sure you open it up so that these outer creases here are valley creases so that you can very easily just pull that over and we're going to actually extend this crease all the way to the other side of the paper. And you can do that lining up this crease here with your center crease right there. And we'll open that back up. Fold the other side just the same way using this crease. We're pulling that whole thing down and land this crease right on that crease. And we'll open it up into this orientation. And our next step is to fold this edge here to land on this diagonal crease. Leave just a slight gap. That'll make the next step easier for you. Just a very slight gap there. You may not even be able to see it on screen, but just know that you want, and we're doing the same thing over here. Just know that you want a little space there because we're gonna be folding right there again and it'll go more smoothly if you leave a little gap. Okay, so our plane should look like this and our next step is to fold from this corner down here to this point right up here where our innermost diagonal crease, this one right here, intersects the top edge of the paper. So kind of just start, grab the paper there, grab the paper down here and you want to fold between those two points. And this is a little bit tricky. But it shouldn't be too bad. And you'll end up with something that looks like that. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side as well, from this point to that point. and your plane should look like this. And we'll go ahead and actually open this fold and open this fold as well. And our next step is to fold this top section down and we're going to use the crease that already exists there but also extend it across these creases, or these top layers, I mean. And next we're going to perform a swivel fold which conveniently all our creases are in the correct direction. We have a valley crease here and a mountain crease right next to it. And basically we just wanna pull the paper in and allow it to fold on this crease and this crease and lay flat just like that. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. And now you can see we have these tabs kind of delineated by this crease here. And we can tuck those tabs in under this central triangular section just like so, just using that existing crease and putting them as the backmost layer. Flatten your model out. And now we're just going to kind of fold away from ourselves, fold the plane in half so that these layers are on the outside. And it's time to actually fold the wings. So we're going to begin just a little above the nose here and slope back at a similar slope to how we did with the canards. Just slope back to about up there. The wing angle isn't crucial, just something similar to what I create will work great for you. So something like that, and you can see the crease I made. And I'll flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Okay, and while we have the, our paper in this orientation, go ahead and fold small fins on the outer edge. 
but you want these to, the crease you make, again, to be parallel to this top edge there, so just do your best to estimate that. And I'll flip mine over and fold the other side to match. And now, with my wings pinched together, I'm going to again grab the scissors and I just want to make some small elevators in the back. Cut just like that, and like that. And we have good elevators in the back, which you can bend up just slightly. These are gonna help your plane fly level rather than diving down. And let's talk about now how we actually connect this rear wing to the Power Up 4.0, because you can see we don't have clips on this uh, main shaft of the module until we add them. So you're going to need, like I said, the uh, parts from the DIY bundle. And amongst those parts, you can see there's a spare clip, which may come assembled like this, or it may come in parts like this. I'm not sure how it will be in the actual package. But what we're going to do is disassemble it in either way. So you'll take the supplied screwdriver and unscrew it if it is assembled, or just gather these parts here. And we're going to go ahead and um, put this side here. Basically, you can see, let me just show you, these two halves are going to meet together like that. So we're going to go ahead and put this one half on the top of our bar and flip it over. So we're working on it upside down here. I'm going to take this other half and just place it right like so. And you can see we have two screw, screw holes. And we'll go ahead and screw those in. Your uh, screwdriver is magnetic, so that can help. Unfortunately, I'm still not doing great here. And there we go. You can see this also can slide forward and backwards on the shaft, and that's going to be useful to us. So go ahead and slide it forward right now and flip it over. And we're going to go ahead and just connect this like we would any other plane. And now that you have it connected, go ahead and slide this back, and you want to do so gently and position your wings all the way to the back where they're bumping these screw mounts in the back of the plane. And that's how you know you've got your wing all the way to the back and that'll give you consistency with my plane. And now all that's left to do is grab that crossbar and mount it like so by starting like that and twisting it into place until it clicks. And this is a truly finished hammerhead. And look at it in all of its beauty. I mean, this is just a gorgeous paper airplane. So if you were able to make it through this pretty difficult tutorial, good job. And I wish you the best of luck as you fly.